things are going into your eyes, they're going into your ears, they go down into your heart, and then out of your heart, your mouth speaks. That's how it works. So if, you're, if your conversation is off, if you still cussing, it's because of what you fed yourself yesterday. See, understand this, God is not glorified. Now, I want you to make sure you get this. God is not glorified when something bad happens to you. He's glorified when he brings you out. Um, let me try that one more time. See, he's not glorified because you're on drugs. He's glorified when you come out. He's not glorified when there's a sickness on your body. He's glorified when you come out of that sickness. And so now watch this now. And so our proper response brings us out of anything. In your life that will never be erased. And there is a need that we have in this church. There's a need that we have in this church for the apostles' anointing and the, and the voice of the apostle to speak and to release something. And this is the day that is designed to happen. So I want you to stand on your feet, give honor to where honor is due, and let's celebrate God for Apostle Moses. In Jesus' name. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To you alone be the glory, the I am that I am, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. We thank you for allowing us to gather into your house. And we thank you for you have a plan for us today. And we purpose and choose to walk within your plan and not our plan. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have heard from people and we have heard from ourselves. But today we want to hear from you again. Because hearing from you brings peace, understanding, and greatness. Blessed be your name now and forever. I pray that you will use my vocal cord and my lips of clay to communicate your oracles to your people. And at the end of it, 100% glory is yours in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Please, you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. And uh, the Lord uh, placed in my heart uh, to bring this message across. Now, this message is so wide. Is so wide that we cannot be able to cover it. Uh, maybe if we are here every day for a week or for, for two weeks. So what we are going to do, we are going to pick some things according to what we were broadcasting yesterday uh, in the service. So that you are able to get these major benefits when you walk in honor. Now, honor is one of the hidden, uh, uh, hidden blessing or benefit. And you see, the enemy has no problem. Uh, uh, when you become powerful, either spiritually or you become powerful financially, he's aware that when honor walks away from your life, it is just a matter of rising and falling. Any man that does not walk in honor, he has a magnet of attracting pride. You see, pride is not found in Walmart. You can't buy pride. And a proud man does not know he's proud. If you tell a man that you're proud, he will rebuke you because no proud man has ever stood anywhere and say, I'm proud. A proud man will try to defend his pride. And what happened? A proud man allows the pride to walk in because there was the absence of honor. When dishonor is operating in a man's life, then pride comes. And pride comes before the fall. And so when honor comes and you begin to walk in honor, then whatever you do will last. You walk in the blessings of God. Now, let's think about this scripture, which every one of you, if you were born again when you were young and you went to a Sunday school, you remember Ephesians chapter 6. Now, Ephesians chapter 6 looked like a scripture for the children. And uh, verse number 1, where the Bible says that children obey your father and mother. And he say that honor, honor your parents. And what happened there? 
it says so that you may, okay, you may live long and live well. Okay, you may live long and live what? Well, and Apostle Paul says that is the commandment with the promise. That means the rest of the commandments are for you to do it, but this one is you do it and there is a reward. There is a promise that is tied with it. Now, when we continue to grow in this culture, one of the most neglected people are those parents, either spiritual parents or biological parents and all those kind of things. And then people are so much running to pray and to talk to God, yet they have violated the principles. The Bible says when you break the hedge, the serpent will bite you. So even if you're in a prayer center fasting for 40 days and the hedge is broken, the serpent will still bite you. Even if you pray and you're speaking tongues in capital letters and you break the hedge, the serpent will still bite you. So the serpent does not bite you because you're anointed. The serpent bites you because there are some laws you're breaking. Now, I understand we are in the dispensation of grace, but you need grace empowers you to fulfill the law that God has given in life. For example, no man here, no matter how powerful you are, you can break the law of gravity. The law of gravity said when you jump up, you come down. So, and, and that's it. That's it. So anytime you try to break that law, you will be frustrated in life. And there are many people who don't understand now. In my research in this message of honor, I get to understand that there are a lot of good people in the Bible that we sympathize with them, and yet in their greatness, they forgot to implement the law of honor. You see, honor is a spiritual magnet. Honor transmits something from a father to the son. In the book of Malachi, the Bible says, if I am your father, where is but my the honor? Of the Jew, which we borrow a lot in Africa, you don't send for your father. You go to your father. You don't send for your father. He said, that says thy son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me quickly. Ah! Who talks like that to his father? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, who says that to his father? You commanding your father to come to you quickly and yet you forgot him for nine years. You got a wife. You didn't tell your father. You got your firstborn, your secondborn. You didn't send a message. And now you're pretending like your father has just emerged from the mass. He was not existing. You knew he was there. Yeah. That is the principle that we talk about, the principle of dishonor, which affected the life of Joseph. He said, come to me down quickly. Come to me down quickly. My father, come to me. Listen, Joseph is the second last born. So the father is, a, is an old man. You are telling the old man to come down to you quickly. Mm. Joseph. Then when he brought his father to Pharaoh, the Bible says Pharaoh, before he could do anything else, remember this is a good Pharaoh. This is not a wicked Pharaoh. Before Pharaoh could do anything else, he wants to know how old is Jacob. That's honor. So Pharaoh is even the one teaching Joseph honor. How old is your father so that I know if I can high five him? If I know if we can talk like boys? You know, if, if, if I can just be there like a homie to your father? How do I operate or relate with your father? Because sometimes you need to understand there are people you don't hug. There are people you don't just give high five. There are some people when you try to get used to them, you, you, you don't allow the anointing to flow. You may be close to your pastor, but that does not mean the anointing will flow. You need to, to know how to keep the distance from the anointing that is working upon your life. Yeah. Otherwise, you just keep talking like Peter. And you, Jesus said, somebody has touched me. I feel the power has gone. And you say like Peter, everybody is touching you. Everybody is touching me, but there's somebody who has touched me with a touch of honor. Yeah. So Pharaoh wants to know how old is your father. Now watch this. That's not the only thing. Then after Joseph has placed his father in Goshen, then he gets a message that your father is sick. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear your father is sick, what should come into your mind is how do you get the doctor? And being a big man, a prime minister in the country, then you have the best doctor. Or you should want to find out, has my father been sick for a long time? What is it that I need to do? The Bible says when Joseph found out that his father was sick, he took his sons quickly to his father so that he does not die before blessing the children. So he wanted to take advantage, not to save, but to save his children. Are you getting it? 
The same day of the wedding, there was a meeting for the family. And because my stepmother was a teacher and she was living a good life, she would not have come to our level. So they rented a house somewhere. And the same day, Saturday night, when they got married, the constitution was unveiled. Unfortunately for me, I was going to class eight, uh, grade eight. I don't know how you, you did here. So that's the last class before you go to high school. And, uh, and uh, it was told, and I am the fifth one. The one my mother left, I am in the middle. There are four, four. Yes, sir. So these four were on their own. It's me and the other four that were still in school. Yes. And right there, that Saturday night, I was asked to leave the house. Ooh. Where was I sent to? To a small house in the village, the one that they normally build when uh, we go through the rite of passage. Do you understand the rite of passage? Uh, that the boys go through. Now, in Africa, mostly, we don't do it when you are young. You must be of age. So that's the house that they built for my brothers. And I was sent back that night to sleep in that house. And next to the house was my mother's grave. So only me and my mother was in the compound. And that became the lifestyle until I was through with my, my primary school. And when I was ready and I passed the exam by the grace of God, my stepmother, in my presence, before my father, yes, said to my father, because she was my teacher, that my head is not, or I'm not good for a white-collar job. I am not, I'm, I'm not catching things in class. I need to do a manual yes. work. Yes. So, so I don't need to be taken to high school. I need to be sent somewhere to do manual work somewhere. And, you know, I saw my dreams you are shut down, you know. To cut the long story short, when God remembered me, because God is good, he turns the tables around. Yes. And, and <laughs> whatever people meant for evil, he stands for your good. Yes. When the Lord turned around my captivity, yes, sir. I went to visit them one day. Now, my father came to visit me one day with the guy who was selling the car. They didn't have a car. Guess who bought their first car? Now, according to you, I am supposed to get a gun and maybe shoot him for not taking me to school. But according to the principles of honor, he is still my father. Yeah. He may be wicked, but he's still my father. So everything I need to do, I need to honor him back. And I organized the pastor's kids, and we gathered about 17 old bishops that were forgotten, that the members never remembered them. And I gathered their children and said, you know what? We want to honor our parents to get the blessing of them as a parent and the blessing of them as a man of God. And guess what? The day that we were to honor them in our church on Saturday, and every family was bringing the gift. Only me and my wife, we were there to bring the gift. My brothers and sisters, some of them pulled out, and I had the ticket for my father to visit the Holy Land of Israel. For the first time, the old man got in the plane. He was able to fly to Egypt, and then they drove into Israel. Are, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Now, it looked like I'm a fool, but I am the one enjoying the fruits. Let me put it this way to sound better. On top of what you do, add honor. On top of what? Of what you do, do what? Add honor. On top of what you do, yes. add honor. Are you an evangelist? Are you a prophet? Are you a bishop? Add honor. You are not the Alpha and Omega. You are not. You can, you can, we cannot trust your fruits if you don't know your roots. And the only way for you to tell us about your roots, you must be walking in honor and reverence to whoever is above you. Praise the name of Jesus. Do you know the story of Elisha? As I conclude that part, the Bible says when Elisha was, took the double portion of the anointing and he's climbing the mountain up, who came? The Bible says 42 children. Now, all of you, I love America for the way you love children. The rights of the children. Anytime American people will come back to Africa and they see children, they are moved to support them. Now, can you imagine these children are insulting the man of God who had a bald head and they say, climb the mountain. When the man of God turned around and looked at them, the Bible says he cast them for dishonoring him. And, and two she bared came and divided one, eight, 21. And they didn't eat like eat, tear them apart. And in that land, there were 42 bodies of 42 children, premature death. Remember, Uriah died when he was young only because they did not obey the principles of honor. I charge you by the masses of God. Get out of it. 
Have confidence any time premature death approach you and you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I've been walking in honor. You know, there, there, there are some demons that will not be scared by the tongues and the fasting. I don't know about here, but I know in Kenya, there are many people when they begin to pray and they discover they pray longer hours than their pastor. They don't honor them anymore. Yeah, because they can't pray. Now, you need to go and ask Hannah. She prayed more than you. She'll pray all night until in the morning there's no more voice. And you know what she's doing? She's, she's, she's casting demons, but there was no demon. The Bible says it is God that had locked up the woman. But Hannah will pray and go home without visiting the bishop for his prayer. Because the bishop looked too big, the Bible says, early. And, and according to Hannah, she's so tiny for fasting. And she's so too close to God, according to her, than a man of God. But when God locks up your womb, it will take a man of God to open it. And so this day in the morning, God makes sure that the man of God was working in the office and Hannah is coming out and say, Hannah, this early you're drinking? And Hannah is, oh, I'm not drinking. What is it? I am a woman of a son of work. What happened to you? I don't have a baby. Oh, you mean you have been not having a baby and I'm not aware you have never come to my office for special prayers? Wow. She's like, I don't need special prayers from you. You don't fast like me. I am a praying machine. Okay, madam praying machine. Until the man of God say, Go. And may the Lord give you your heart desire. That's the only time Samuel came. Amen. Don't, don't, don't allow some delays and some premature death simply because you cannot walk in honor. Let me give you this another example on the other side. We have mentioned about good people. Hannah, prayerful. Joseph, a righteous man. Uriah, committed to war. Good people. Then in Joshua chapter 2, there is a story of a bad person with honor. Hey, I love this one. Her name is Rahab. You call them Rahab, right? Rahab. Back home, it's a Rahab. Rahab. Now, Rahab is a prostitute and not a prostitute that hides. No. It's a kind of prostitute that is so proud of what she's doing that she has even brought her house on the walls. And probably there is even a photo of Rahab, you know, with a very nice smile. And it's written, welcome to the empire of Rahab, the prostitute. Because the Bible says, when these spies came in, they did not look for Rahab. They just walked in the house of Rahab. And when they got in, cha -cha 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 -cha. now, please, I give you homework. Go read Joshua chapter 2. You see something that I saw there. The Bible says, when the men came, Rahab took them, never said nothing to them, took them and brought them to the upper house somewhere, hid them there, and she came out. And of course, she looked convincing that men came and left because, you see, thank you, sir. Now, she's outside there and the soldiers come. Chua, 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 chua. Rahab was known. Even the king knew Rahab because the Bible said the king sent them to Rahab. <laughs> so she's this hot lady and, and she's outside there, maybe with undone hair and with some cash. And uh, she's like, they're like, Rehab, they say, yes, uh, there are some men in your house, and you think they are just customers. They are not customers. They are spies. And Rehab said, oh, they are? Yeah. Okay, they were here, and they left. I didn't know. Where did they go? This way. The soldiers were convinced enough to go that way. And the Bible says when they went, she waited until the time the gate was closed. Then she went. And the Bible says those two men of God that were sent by Joshua, they were almost going to sleep. I said, you know, sir, come down now. They never told Rahab, read. They never told Rahab what they came to do. It is Rahab who told them what they have come to do. It is Rahab, the prostitute, who is telling this man that your God is God in heaven above and believe here. It is Rahab who is telling them, I know God has given you the city. Now, look at the prostitute with honor. This is what she says. She says to them, when God will deliver this city in your hand, Jericho, remember my father. That's the first thing. Remember my father. Remember my mother. And then remember our relatives. Now, let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. There is no family that is proud of having their sister or their daughter that is a prostitute. Either in the days of old and even now. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. 
No matter how powerful your sister is, no matter how rich she is, you cannot go around saying, oh, this is my sister. She's an international prostitute. She owns this flat. No, you cannot say. I believe the parents tried to stop her, but the woman was in it. But yet in the midst of the opposition she faced from the family, Rahab knew the first person to save is my father. She was not like, uh-huh, you have been talking against me. You have been again. Now I'm going to be saved. All of you will die in jail. Because no, I cannot let my father die here. I honor him too much. I honor my mother and my brothers. And the men lifted up their hands. <laughs> the Bible says they lifted up their hands. And they say, we swear. If you not tell anybody about this thing we are about to do, we will save you. But make sure anybody you want to save, come here to this prostitution house. To this house that is not right, but it has a right woman. This house that is not holy, the way Joseph was holy, but it has a woman who understands how to honor. First, she honored the two men of God. And second, the parents. Now, to cut the long story short, you know that happened in Joshua chapter 2. And now, chapter 6 is when they are starting the process. God has changed the game. God has changed the game, Bishop. God says now, you're not going to take Jericho the way you took it. You know, I understood, sir, and that's why I don't joke with tithing, that Jericho was the 10th city. So God said, touch nothing. That's the 10th. That's my tithe. Don't touch anything. So Joshua is the one telling the people. Look at it. The woman who is a prostitute received the assistant pastors. Let me call them that. The two men sent the assistant. But now the Israel is being, the, is being given an order by the senior bishop of the ministry. Listen to what he says. He says, when you get to Jericho, don't touch anything because it's a cast thing. That's what he says. Like, don't touch it. Now let's leave it everything. The tenth one you don't touch. It will bring a cast to you. And the Bible says there's a man among the good people. Who? His name is Akan. Akan is not a prostitute. Akan is not a Jer Jer Jericho. 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 He is a Jew, a soldier. So when they march in, when God, now, now Bishop, I don't know if this is a study would do it because there is one version that says the house of Rahab was on the walls of Jericho. And the father and the mother and the family were in the wall. So could it be there is a part of the wall that did not fall? <laughs> and the part of the wall of the of the of the of the wall that did not fall is not a church or a prayer center. It was a prostitution center with honor. <laughs> the Bible says her faith is she received the servants of God, the spies who came in. So she gets her whole verse, a whole verse of 31. And then verse 32, Apostle Paul says, I have no time to talk about Samuel, talk about David, talk about Gideon, talk about Jephthah, talk about uh, Samuel, David, Jephthah, Samson, Gideon, and other prophets. Okay, wait a minute, Apostle Paul. You are sandwiching all these great men of God in one verse, verse 32. And you're giving a prostitute, and you're still calling her a prostitute. You say, Rahab the prostitute. Wow. You're giving her the whole verse by herself. What's that? Now, can I surprise you? And then, now Rahab is an elder. He said, by elders, they obtain good reports. So Rahab, <laughs> a prostitute. <laughs> is an elder. What did she do? Apostle Paul said, she honored and opened her door for spies. She never sold them out. That's all. Really? Yes. Now, I'm coming back there, but when you read from verse 1, of Hebrews 11, all through to the last verse, you not hear the founding king of Israel. His name is King Saul. He was not qualified by Apostle Paul to become an elder. He was just given one order by his prophet. Go and destroy the Amalekites. <laughs> he decided to save some. And when he came at the time of sacrifice, the man of God was running late. There was traffic in 95 South. And so he's like, keep on singing. I'm coming. And the king was like, what? We 
can stay here waiting for this man. What does he do? Be, give me the knife. Cha, cha, cha. He started offering. The, when he's the process of offering the sacrifice, the man of God showed up. With a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a apostolic prophetic anointing. And he said to him, what's going on? And he's like, you see, people are complaining that they are going. You see, you could not wait for me for hours, not, not days, hours. And he said to him, you know what? When you are small in your own eyes, not other people's eyes, your own eyes, you knew you were small. God elected you. In other words, it's my vote that put you in the office. And you could not wait for me. He said, boy, your kingdom has come to an end. And the man of God started going. He, the spirit of dishonor in Saul, because the Bible says he's the tallest among everybody, he grabbed him. Where are you going? Come here. And the skirt of the man of God was torn. And he turned around and he said, boy, your kingdom has been handed over to another person. Then Apostle Paul comes and says, you are not qualified to be among the elders to be celebrated. I will replace you by a prostitute. I will put a prostitute in your place. So delete and ding. The other guy, there are two guys. The other guy that is not there is the man where the priesthood foundation was laid on. His name is Aaron. Aaron is not among the elders. Moses is. He's not. Aaron is not. Aaron was the, the senior pastor Moses left for prayer and fasting for 40 days. By the time he's coming back to the church that he left for Aaron, he has not only changed the name of the church. He has even changed the God they worship. <laughs> So Moses is afar off and he's like, what? That noise? And Joshua is like, they are celebrating. So he said, no, that's not celebration. The way I hear those songs, they have changed. I love them saying, you are worthy, oh Lord, my God. I hear them saying, you are worthy, oh cow, golden cow. Something <laughs> has changed. Come on, let's have dinner, man. Let's, let's enjoy. This place, I'm honored. So the anointing is flowing. <laughs> But when he went to his hometown, they dishonored him. What happened? The Bible says only few people are healed. Because the anointing does not flow on the ground of dishonor. If you have never shared a testimony in this church, don't ask if your bishop is anointed. Check your honor level. Check your honor level. Check your honor level. The pipe is still flowing. What's wrong with your connection? The challenge is not the pipe. The challenge is not the joint. The, the challenge is your connection. Because ladies and gentlemen, God is not an American. God is not an African. God is a spirit. He does not answer to your tongue. He answers to your heart. So anytime he sees your heart and your heart is full of honor, at times you don't need to pray more. You just need to come closer and the power is shifting. Power is shifting. Power is shifting. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Things are going into your eyes, they're going into your ears, they go down into your heart, and then out of your heart, your mouth speaks. That's how it works. So if, you're, if your conversation is off, if you still cussing, it's because of what you fed yourself yesterday. See, understand this, God is not glorified. Now, I want you to make sure you get this. God is not glorified when something bad happens to you. He's glorified when he brings you out. Um, let me try that one more time. See, he's not glorified because you're on drugs. He's glorified when you come out. He's not glorified when there's a sickness on your body. He's glorified when you come out of that sickness. And so now watch this now. And so our proper response brings us out of anything.